a live at 2 p.m. Atlantic time, and we are here today because we're having a little party. We're just having a little, I thought I might get up on the table and do a little jig, but it's kind of high. I don't know. I don't think I better. Do you guys think I should? No, no. no don't do it because <laughs> if I fell, it would be like, yeah. So here's the new book, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it around. And people can read a meditation, anybody who wants to, okay? So it's called Meditations for Makers. And the idea is, is that when we make, we are really close to ourselves. And, um, uh, well, some people, I, I just think creating is a really peaceful pursuit. And over the years, I've thought of a lot of different little thoughts and ideas. And I sent 60,000 words of them to uh, the editor. And if you listen to the podcast that we have on, I interviewed the, em uh, the editor, whose name is Emily, and it's published by Nimbus. And I sent her 69,000 words, and she sent me back 23. And if you listen to the podcast, you know why. So here's our new book, and it's 1995, and it's on our website, and it's called Meditations for Makers. So I'm going to read you one from it, and then... I'll read this one. And then I'm going to pass it around and let other people read them. Is that okay, you guys? Yeah. I can get on people's nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I am single-minded. I plow ahead. When I get an idea on my mind, the only way to get it off my mind is to get it done. I blunder. I make mistakes. And as I get older, I want to bother others less. It is that simple. So I try harder to be better, and mostly I do better, but still I don't do perfect. So that's what they're like. They're just these little stories that I think a lot of people can relate to. Mary, do you want to read one? Mary was the first, is often the first editor on my books, and she's worked here at the studio for how many years, Mary? Nine years. Nine years. Yeah. So you gotta, Mary, you're going to have to take your mask off. Yes, please. And find an appropriate one. Oh, you can read any one you want, Mary. Just look what I read. <laughs> Okay. You're going to have to read, read loud. Have you ever been embarrassed by someone you love? Can we hold those two feelings, affection and embarrassment, together? Then I remember to love another is to let them be themselves. And so I love them, even as they are, and hope that they will love me, even as I am. It's getting all about me, isn't it? <laughs> I'd say anybody want to, anybody else want to read one? You don't have to, Katie. Katie, <laughs> yeah, if you want to, you can. Oh well, this could be fun because I didn't bring my glasses. Do you want mine? During staff wing night, always make sure to save money for the Uber. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> She's bad. Uh, no, you're going to have to get it. You haven't got your glasses? I just couldn't resist that. It's kind of true to me, too. So. I am not always conscious of why I make every rug. Sometimes they just come out of me and I find them. It is not always deliberate, mentioned, or planned. I just start pulling loops. Ah, thanks, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to speak up, Catherine. Okay. Dig into your own stories for ideas. Get to know yourself so your work can reflect you. Believe in those small stories because big stories are really just small stories that have come alive. Okay. <laughs> I'll try with the end in just to open it. Oh, I opened up the one you just did. <laughs> uh, for the snow that adds light to the night, for the moon that shines down upon it, for me, the little one who wanders down below it, with more questions than answers, more joy than sorrow, more love than anger, may the moonlight lead me to find a way to share the abundance that has been laid there before me. May I be good, be kind, be true, May I love the day before me and truly see it is for the gift that it is. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. Now we got a cake. We have a blueberry cheesecake made by whom? Kelly Chapman. Kelly Chapman. And it's really gorgeous. So I'm going to cut the cake, and then I'm going to do some hooking. And I'm just going to put on my mask while I cut that cake. One second. 
Can someone read one for me? Yeah. It's page 67. Do you want, why don't you read it? No, I'll hold no, it up I for you. Read. You, you don't want to read? <laughs> she wants me, uh, if I can find my glasses. which one do you want? It's the top no. of 67. Okay. The tree? 67 is right here. When I look at the simple, okay, yeah. yeah. When I look at those simple lines of a tree or a chair or a flower, I'm sure I can draw it. Then I sit down and learn that even the simplest of lines have their secrets. What I draw is something different than what I saw. But I begin to see that, although I might not think it is as good, my drawings too has its secrets. And I think that is really true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we all have our own. Did you want to read one, Angie? Sure. Okay, you read one while I cut the cake. Okay. We'll give it a try with Lorna's glasses. I'm going to wash my hands. We practice these ancient things like weaving, knitting, rug making, and yet it is the newest technology that has brought us together in it and given these ancient things resurgent. How true is that? <laughs> yeah, just like what we're doing today. We're able to be together. And normally when I have a book launch, we have a big group of people like we have a, you know, we invite the community and we say, come on in and have something good. But today we just had to have a small group. But with you guys, a lot of you I know are celebrating Thanksgiving and you won't see this until later. But with you guys today, because of technology, we're able to have you with us and we're really thankful for technology. Even though sometimes we spend a whole day trying to get an app to work. <laughs> Yeah, and they're having a hard time with your mask. Okay, Sorry. yeah. Well, I'll let someone else cut the cake because I don't want to cut the cake without my mask on. But let's get started eating it. We might as well. And I'm going to take you guys in and hook for a little bit. Joe wanted me to show an, a wool. So this is called um, Sunsets and Feels. And Greg dyed it yesterday. I don't want any icing on there. So I'm really happy with the book. It's a big thing to put out a book for me without rugs in it. That's Sunsets and Feels. And it's on the website now. It's hand-dyed. Without, It's a big deal for me to put out a book without any rugs in it because usually I kind of stand behind my rugs and they're kind of, you know, it's a kind of a safety net. But So I'm excited to see this book go out. I wanted to thank personally thank Shelley Richardson. She ordered five copies the other day to give away as Christmas presents. And, okay, like, who could you guys give this to for Christmas, this book? My mother. Your mother, for sure. Yeah. She paints. Yeah. She doesn't hook rugs, but she paints. Yeah. Who could you give it to? I have a friend who's very creative, and she would enjoy it. She would enjoy it. How about you, Katie? Can you think of anyone? My mother. Your mother, for sure. I agree. <laughs> Your mother. I'm not going to say because they're watching. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. What about you, Lorna? Who could you give this to for Christmas? My sister, You're, she's really starting to get back into her creativity. Yeah, Gail would love it. So it's for everybody. It's not just for people who hook rugs. Remember that. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to say thank you to Emily and if you want it, who, who edited the book with me. Because I think it is a really better book at 21,000 words. And, and I didn't like it at first. <laughs> I didn't like that she took out all those words. It's sort of like a, ah! What do you mean? But then you sort of realize that sometimes, you know, you don't need to say things three or four different times in three or four different ways. You can just bring it right down to what it is. And um, I'll read a couple more meditations when we wrap it up today. But first of all, I want to do two things. I want to let these beautiful people eat their cake. And I want to go in here and I want to show you how we decided on a kit. And I want to show you the, the rugs that I'm working on now. So Shelly said you made her cry and she's happy to give oh, them as gifts. Isn't that nice? Thank you. But it's really like I notice every order that comes in. I look and I do notice. And, and when someone says, I believe in her, that that's, people will like that as a gift. That makes me feel really good. So we had all of these little rugs that we were deciding on. So we put these up on the website and they're available now. These two are available as patterns. And you can, you can make a kit out of them if you want. Um, you can make a kit out of them if you, if you want. So you can, or you can just get the pattern. And then we were really having a hard time deciding. So what happened was, at first we thought we were going to do the cat. But then, I don't know, I did, did you notice what I did with the cat? I made a change on there. Big change on that cat. 
I put the black in the outline instead of the pale yellow. I took the pale yellow out of there. And so what we've decided is that these will be two new kits. We're going to do, what's this one called, Angela? The th Was it Roses Still Bloom? The Roses Still Bloom, right, right. I couldn't remember that even though I told you the whole story about it. And then this one is called Sheep in the Lavender Field, right? Sheep in the Lavender. Sheep in the Lavender. So these two will be, this one's up, but this one is uh, going to be up tomorrow. We just made up the kits. I noticed Terry was down drawing them today. So come on in and I'll show you what I'm hooking on. Because one of the things that I want to do is I want to make sure, I want to make sure that um, I have, I want a nice field kit. Like I want a beautiful kit that's a good size, but not as big as Gray Barn in the field. So this is how I do it. So I'm working on both of these. And this is like my favorite tree. And I think I'm going to put a blueberry field in here. And I think I'm going to do circles in the sky. But right now I was walking up the road this morning and I noticed there's so much um, like uh, wheat color and fawn colors on the side of the, on the side of the road. And so I'm just kind of hooking a field rug. And the other thing I notice now is that there are often kind of red berries standing out a lot. They're standing out and they're really beautiful. I'm excited to have the cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys? Yes. Lorna's, Lorna's taping for us and so is Angela. And just be ready in a few months. We're going to move... We're going to, hopefully, we're going to be able to do uh, these lives right from our website. We're going to be working on that. And we'll always share them on Facebook and stuff. But um, we're going to, we're working on that, aren't we, Angela? We are. Trying to get them so that we have a little, we have, um, we can, you can be, you can see them right on our website. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking all the creams and the, and just a mixture of whatever colors I had. Like, they, you don't want them all the same. And sometimes you just want a little bit of this color or a little bit of that color. And I'm kind of doing branches. And I, I kind of see this rug as seven acres. It's kind of like the land that I live on. I kind of feel like, I feel like the land we live on, we're just all kind of, we're all renting, you know. We're all just passing through. So... Some curious minds are wondering what's behind the sheet out in the studio. Oh, are they? Are you wondering? <laughs> yeah, you noticed I did that, didn't you? We had our workshop yesterday, the last of our Zoom workshops. That was a great series, Angela. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot they of fun. Were they were great. We had, we had a, I think there's only about 35 in the workshop yesterday, so it was really intimate kind of feeling. There were more people who were registered, but some people just watched the recordings of them. And I told them that... Uh, what we've done is I did up two rugs for, for the online winter course, and I was trying to decide which one to do. And uh, I, I recorded, so I recorded two courses, and, uh, and I decided on one, and that's the one that I decided on. So I don't think we're going to try not to reveal that till I don't know, January. So we'll just yeah. have to keep that piece of wool there and pin it up every week, keep it hidden. I wonder if we'll forget. We could maybe take them down. Oh, that's getting too dark. It has. It has this. The the thing is, is when you're doing this, you got to keep. You got to keep it light in the foreground. I look forward to the day when we can just like have a party here and invite seventy five or hundred people and have the place sort of full. It will be fun again. That day will come just not here yet can you mention the yarns that you're using for yeah marie? sure for what marie van burkle uh these yarns she's doing a similar rug similar uh, colors i think fossil cliffs would work good for this and i also used um this one was um it's a fleece artist yarn and it's a three ply, a thick three ply fleece artist yarn. I forget the name of it. And then I used a kind of camel colored wool cloth and I used a sari. Sorry, I don't always know all the names. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to go over to this tree. And I was thinking about outlining the tree in a, like a, maybe a deep plum. And I want to, 
I want to see what I got here. So I had this tree drawn on and it was really perfect. Like it was really nicely shaped. And then I thought, you know, that tree that I love so much, it's not that nicely shaped. And so I'm, I'm going to hook it differently. I'm going to just kind of make it way more raggedy. And Katie, who was at the book launch, she was such a good sport. Thank you, Katie. She was here as a customer. And, and I said, do you want to come? And she was like, great, come on. And she came on and read with us. Did you get some cake, Katie? No, but I probably lost the yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a nurse now, Katie? I am. You're a nurse, wow. Great. Would you like some cake? Katie? Sorry? Would you like a piece of cake? Okay, so now I'm going to make this really raggedy, all my edges. And I just wanted to say that the Uber thing that Angie read is not actually in the book. <laughs> <laughs> she just didn't have her glasses and couldn't read. I lost my connection. Oh, I might come right back. Did it come back, Lorna? Oh, hopefully it will. And that is a purple color you're using, isn't it's it? It's quite plum, yeah. Quite plum. So the question I have for you guys today is, have any of you received your book yet? Have any of you received your copies of Meditations for Makers? Just let me know if you've received it or not. I'm curious. Gotta give you a second to answer. Karen Hawthorne, yes, I love it. Oh, good, Karen. That's what I'm looking for. Looking for praise. <laughs> <laughs> good. Joyce, sure did. Great. Sherry Peterson, I got my book. Good. Jane Smith, yes, love it. Excellent. Crystal so, Ham, I have. Paula, yes. Great. Laura, Lorna, were you able to get reconnected? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Ann Bird from Kentucky got hers. Oh, Ann, you got it all the way down Kentucky so far, and you're here. What are you cooking today, Ann? Are you cooking? Are, do we have lots of Americans here? Got the turkey in the oven? What are you cooking today, Anne? Are you cooking a turkey? I just called my sister to wish her a happy Thanksgiving because she lives in the States. She's been really busy with her Etsy shop. Do you loosen your patterns on the shed cam frame when you're not hooking? No, I do not. I just keep it taut all the time. Someone yeah. was concerned about whether it stretches it. I don't find that it does. I've never had any trouble with that. So let's, so now I've got this all, now it looks better to me. Like it's all raggedy, rugged, not, I love all these raggedy lines. What's everybody having for supper tonight? This is my favorite question. What are you guys cooking? Are you cooking turkey? Are, Can are any Canadians, are you celebrating, like, two? Or any, do any Canadians cook a turkey just because they know all their American cousins are? You say, I'm not letting those guys have turkey and us not. Rich is making salmon trimmings tonight, so I'm over the moon. He's making what? Salmon trimmings. What's that? Uh, pieces of salmon? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. But the, he, he cooks them, and they're really good. Oh, that's good. And it's not chicken. Good. It's like small pieces of salmon. Yeah, and it's oh, not chicken. Oh, that's good. Lorna's not eating that much these days because her son has moved out, and now they just eat toast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, he's, 
<laughs> cooking. I just told him he doesn't feel like cooking. I can have toast. You can have toast. Yeah. Lauren is not like me. Oh, food. She, you like food, but you don't like... Like, we were in Ottawa for four days. I didn't eat any, hardly a thing. Is that right? You were in Ottawa for four days? See, like, if I was in Ottawa for four days, I would have been at eight restaurants. Yeah, but, you know, I was having a little hard time. Yeah, I know. You're going to miss your boy. Yeah, but he's doing good. He's doing great. All righty. So, salmon trimmings tonight. I don't know. I had turkey tetrazzini for lunch because Joe, Joe's partner, Harry, sent it in to me. He made it last night for supper, and he sent me in that and a little bit of garlic bread. So, no, I kind of keep my, I like to keep it really taut. Okay, so what else are we going to do today? How, how much time do we have left? We've got seven minutes. We've got lots of time. So I've got a letter for you that I want to read. Where'd it go? So this is from Donna, and I like these letters. Sometimes I get letters, and people say, People say, this is just between you and me. I had a beautiful letter this weekend, and, and, and I, won't all, I will never, if you send me a letter, I won't read it unless, unless I ask you. I forgot to turn on the lights in here today. It's kind of dark. Dear Deanne, I have never met you, although I once saw a rug you produced that was installed at the visitor center where you enter Nova Scotia. Its size was impressive. I was thrilled to see a fiber piece being pe featured in such a signature statement for the art of, the po uh, art of possible and recycle recyclable. I am an American, and I have been a traditional rug hooker for about 20 years now. Before that, I was always attracted to fiber through weaving, basket coiling, and even latch hooking back in the day. Because some of my husband's people are Nova Scotians from Scotch Village, the Lockharts and the Salters, and have a long tradition of utilitarian mat making in the winter months. I became intrigued by this fiber tradition too. That started my love affair with this forgiving and endlessly versatile creative medium. Isn't that a great way to describe rug hooking? A forgiving and endlessly versatile and creative medium. Formerly, I lived in a historic home in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and my rugs were used in that setting to great advantage. The combination of creative form and function made my heart sing every time I looked at or stepped on them. My dog loved them as a comfortable place to rest, with the smell and touch of my hands still available to her as she nestled her nose into the fiber. Isn't that great? Like her dog could smell her hand from the work and made the dog, made the dog happy to be with her, right? I now live in busy Denver, Colorado, and I still hook rugs. But the feeling is different in this culture. I do miss the deep history and connection that I felt with both the house and the rugs in my former home, but have ventured into new styles and use of fiber types in this more cosmopolitan setting, which makes sense. I'm going to lift this off. It's shaking away here. Every Sunday, I look forward to reading your letter. It feels like a reassuring, contemplative message from home sent by an old and valued friend. Somehow, your words always seem to resonate with something that I'm experiencing at the very same time you address an issue or share an insight. I've spent the last two months trying to find some measure of control in these challenging times by organizing, culling, and reassessing how we live and what we need. It has been cathartic, revealing, and freeing, and sometimes very emotional as well. Yes, because you always find old letters and old pictures and even books from another time or clothes from another time and they make you think it's true as a good friend of mine once said in times of trouble women have always reached for their basket of pieces i believe either by working with her hands to create or call a release of tension is available to us so thank you for being there each sunday morning while i have my coffee and share your thoughts your missives have brought comfort and food for thought into the start of each week for me all the best to you donna what a nice letter so every Sunday we write our Sunday letters. You guys know that. And, uh, and sometimes I get letters back and sometimes I read them here. I won't read them here unless I ask you. But I just find it really, I find that the art of letter writing is like it's another art in itself. And, and it is um, a practice that like cleaning out closets or like hooking rugs. It can be really cathartic. So I'm going to check now, make sure I did everything I was going to do today. We're missing one thing, Deanne. What are we missing? The door. Oh, the color of the door. I didn't have that on my list for today to tell you the color of the door. Should we save that for next week? Oh, uh, I had a few people mention it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss a thing. <laughs> so, okay, you got to guess the color of the door. 
Have you seen it yet? Has it, has it been on yet? I don't think so. Okay. So what color do you think I painted it? I got two, three emails this week. Someone said gold. Someone said blue. And someone said red, I think. I can't remember. Terry uh, Turner. No! What? She wants to see it. No, we're going to tell you. Do you guys got to get, you got, okay, give me three guesses on the color. <laughs> Put my earring back in here. Debbie says red. Red is, uh, is an awesome possibility with me because it is one of my favorite colors. Joyce says plum. Marie says red. Pamela says red. Lots of reds. No. Harry Moore, who runs Acadian Printing in Amherst, who is Harry the Printer. If you're ever on my old, old blog, we used to call him Harry the Printer, suggested this color. Wait now, I'll turn on the lights for you because it's a little dark. Do you want to see my stairs to nowhere? Come on, I'll show you my stairs to nowhere. <laughs> this is it. This is my story, stairs to nowhere. And there's my color wheel. Oh, okay, up there where I never see it. <laughs> <laughs> so the door is... It's light blue. It's kind of a blue-green if you really look at it. But it's kind of a, it doesn't look very blue-green today. Kind of an aqua blue-green color. And I have touches of that color around here. Um, I have... So I just... Harry suggested it, and I went with it. And then after I went with it, I realized, like, I have this little picture of myself and my neighbors, the Pomeroys, when I was a kid, uh, right there, that one of them brought me. And then I had that that my daughter gave me, and I have that Let's Sit Crooked and Talk Straight, because I love that. It's from, it's an Armenian proverb, and it is from uh, a press, Deep Hollow Print, uh, in the valley. And... Uh, that's that's the color I went and I also painted my bookcase and because my bookcase was really dark and I I want to I want to renovate a little bit like I want to I want a new chair but my chair is perfect so I'm not getting a new chair so I painted this and I painted the door and it kept me busy and I painted the legs of my chair black so I spent a whole day doing that this week so that tells you what I'm up to Lorna said I had too much time on my hands <laughs> so now I think the next thing really is for me to read you a couple of meditations and, or maybe we'll have Robert read a meditation. Do you want to read a meditation, Robert? Do you want to read a meditation out of my book? No. <laughs> that's, Robert? that's the price for having cake. Come on out, you guys. We all did. Robert, we all did. Did, you, did you know I had a new book out? Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I just like to read it in private, though. Oh, you would. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm halfway through it, actually. <laughs> uh, well, no, it's the last one. <laughs> That's the last book that you're halfway through? Yeah. I'm yeah. Getting there. You're getting there. Yeah. Do you want to read one? No, I don't. No? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should read your Let Mary read another one. No, I no, I She's a, she's a teacher. She read all day. Yeah, she is the teacher. Okay. No. You don't want to read any more? No, you read one. Did you read any? Oh look, there's one about you, Robert. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Today on a walk with Robert, he spotted a salamander on the road. The little toasted orange creature had mauve dots on its back. We took it off the road and onto the grass because we need to take care of the tiniest of things if the biggest of things are going to work out. That's nice. That is nice, isn't it? Do you want to read one, Robert? No, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> he just came for cake. I just came for the cheesecake. You just came for the cheesecake? No. You didn't even know it was a book launch. No. I no. Didn't <laughs> Just the cake I did. There, it's so good. Do you want to? Do you want to take a bite and tell them how good Kelly it is? Chapman. Yeah, isn't it good? If anybody wants a cake, call Kelly. I don't know. Is it? Is she? Are they allowed? I don't, I don't know how much she does it, but I mean, she just makes beautiful cheesecakes. She, she does. does. I have no idea. She does this is the third it. time we've had her cheesecake. It's awesome. I'm gonna go walk by upstairs and see if I can get through without somebody <laughs> taking it on. <laughs> I'll be probably back for another one. Okay. Good see you, Robert. That's my cameo. Bye bye. <laughs> Take care. See you guys next week. We'll do lots of hooking. And I hope that our American friends have a beautiful Thanksgiving day, that your dinner is good, that your gravy's not lumpy, and that everything is that your family's there and that no one throws a mashed potato across the table. All that stuff that everybody's happy and good and loving with each other and that the food is good too. So. Take care, and God bless everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to our American cousins and friends let's and eat cake. family. And let's eat cake. <laughs> we are eating turkey. We're eating cake. See you, guys. <laughs>